Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm First of all, I want to thank the organizer for giving me the chance to speak today. And I'm going to talk about some works with my supervisor, Agnese Vinci and Alessandro Giorgodis. So let me start with some very brief overview. Uh, We're going to study some ADS5 cross S5 uh, supergravity amplitudes and their dual uh, CFT correlation functions. And in particular, we will try to understand the interplay between some uh, CFT three-level data and part of the amplitude in an attempt to understand if this is possible to reconstruct uh, amplitudes or part of them and correlators, knowing uh, just uh, some piece of information. The motivation behind our work is, uh, first of all, trying to understand uh, if it is possible to translate uh, unitarity, which is well known in uh, flat space, uh, in ADS uh, and in the CFT scenario. Uh, some similar work uh, have been done in this topic, but we are trying to extend this also in the case of N equal four. And uh, we will focus mainly on flat space amplitude, but we strongly believe that these results can be extended to ADS5 cross S5. And in this way, it will be possible to apply some bootstrap techniques to get information on amplitudes in curved space, which is something that is uh, usually hard to access with other type of methods. So uh, this setup is uh, the ADS uh, CFT correspondence and uh, we are considering 4D SUN N equal four superior means at large uh, color number N and the large tooth coupling lambda. And it is uh, well known to be dual to type 2B supergravity on ADS5 cross S5. And the objects we are considering are on the CFT side four point functions in uh, an expansion in inverse power of N and these are dual in general to a genus expansion of uh, amplitude in curved space. But as I was mentioning before, we are um, considering this flat space limit. So we are considering amplitudes in R10 expanding in G Newton, where this constant is uh, related to the color number by this uh, relation. And uh, there is a connection between uh, expansion in one uh, over N and uh, loop expansion of the amplitude. Uh, the operators that we are considering are alpha EPS scalar operator, which are protected uh, with dimension delta equal to and transforming uh, in this way under our symmetry. And we care about this operator because it is uh, the super primary of the star tensor multiplet, which is dual to the graviton multiplet on the gravity side. The way in which we can study uh, these uh, quantities are from one side, the double discontinuity. Uh, this quantity uh, is uh, relevant because it allows to reconstruct an um, a correlator uh, through the Lorentz inversion formula. And in particular, we will consider the, um, the contribution to these double discontinuities from these three level data that I will define later on. And we will try to understand if uh, at what extent there is a connection between this double discontinuity and the usual concepts of uh, cuts and discontinuities in uh, flat space amplitude. Uh, I, will not I will not have time to mention it, but uh, this analysis can also be done in Melly space uh, where generally it's uh, clearer to understand the connection between correlator and amplitude. Uh, but let's start from the four-point function. We are considering the four-point function of uh, identical O2 operators. Thanks to superconformal symmetry, this can be expressed as uh, one function, this G, which depends on uh, these two cross uh, ratio U and V. This G can be uh, expanded in OP, where the exchange operators are this O delta L that can be either protected or non-protected. The interesting thing is that we can completely disentangle the contributions from uh, these two types of multiplets uh, by writing G as uh, one G short, which is a function uh, only of uh, short and semi-short multiplets. And this is known exactly and I, n minus two exact. And another part which is uh, more interesting and dynamical and carry uh, dependence on lambda and n, and uh, this is made uh, of uh, long multiplets. This, uh, so we are going to say this h, this can be written as a sum over some coefficient a, which is uh, the square of the usual op coefficient c, and some so, so conformal, super conformal blocks. Uh, we will uh, stick to the leading order in lambda, uh, also called the supergravity limit. And uh, we are expanding H in inverse power of N uh, through the expansion of this coefficient A and of the dimension of the um, 
exchange operators uh, which acquire anomalous dimension, uh, this gamma. Up to order n to the minus four, uh, the only operators that can be exchanged uh, in DOP are double trace ones, while at higher orders, uh, also higher trace operator will start contributing. But uh, let's uh, consider only double trace operators. And it is known that they can uh, mix among amongst them themselves. And there is a degeneracy between operators which have the same uh, bare dimension, but acquire different anomalous dimension. Uh, fortunately, this problem has been solved up to order uh, n to the minus two. And in particular, we exactly know uh, an expression for this uh, A0 and uh, anomalous dimension gamma one for each degeneracy index i. Uh, the knowledge of these two coefficients was, was super successful at one loop because uh, from one side, uh, it allows to fully reconstruct the collaborator from uh, its double discontinuity because um, the only non-vanishing term in uh, H2, which is uh, the correlator at order to the minus four, is uh, this uh, log squared, which as you can see, does depend only on A0 and gamma one. And uh, through the inversion formula, this piece uh, fixes completely H2. And uh, even more interesting maybe is that it was possible to establish a, a connection, a one-to-one -one correspondence between this double discontinuity and uh, the usual standard discontinuity of the corresponding Feynman amplitude in 10 dimension, because uh, we are considering this bike point limit, which is the same as the flat space limit that I was mentioning before. Um, so at this stage, we can see that there is a connection between the, this quantity, this double discontinuity, and a cut or a usual discontinuity, which uh, we know that can reconstruct an amplitude through a usual dispersion relation. So our question was, uh, what we can say at higher order? So at higher order, uh, the knowledge of these A0 and gamma one is still sufficient to fix only part of the correlator, uh, and namely these uh, leading logarithms, uh, which are leading in the sense that they are the highest power of uh, log appearing in the um, corresponding uh, the corresponding order in the correlation function. And unfortunately, this term is not enough to fully reconstruct the double discontinuity and, to, and so to, to fix the correlator, but still tells us something. And uh, one thing that one has to be careful of is that also higher trace uh, operators will start contributing at uh, higher order. But still, one can ask which term in the dual amplitude this uh, leading log maps to. And the answer that we... Uh, we had is that in the flat space limit, this quantity is exactly dual to this iterated scat. Uh, so we, um, we unveiled the connection between uh, some the logarithmic singularity in uh, a CFT correlation function and some singularity in the um, amplitude side. And uh, so one thing one can think of um, uh, of really understanding this connection and uh, because when once we know uh, which part of the correlator we can reconstruct and which part of the amplitude we can reconstruct, uh, it will be possible to extend all this reasoning to occur the space time. And uh, as I was mentioning before, we obtained similar results with a very similar interpretation also in Melling space. And uh, let me conclude with some open problems. Uh, first of all, we can, one can think of including some stringy corrections. So going away from the strict lambda to infinity limit. Uh, as I was mentioning, perform a, sim a similar analysis in full ADS5 cross S5. And finally, understand better this singularity structure and what we can uh, infer about a general amplitude knowing just this uh, leading logarithm. And thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you very much for the very nice talk. Are there any uh, questions or um, observations? Maybe I have just a curiosity, not an expert. Uh, what's the main challenge in including the stringy, uh, stringy corrections? Uh, it's mainly a computational problem because, uh, okay, to include stringy correction, we, you, we have to solve again a mixing problem because it's not uh, completely known. And so it's hard because you have to more or less to diagonalize the matrix, but it's a bit challenging because you have to know more correlators than the one that you are considering. So it's mainly computational. Okay, but in principle, have... it, it can be done. Okay, okay. So maybe I have a small question. Is uh, you show this this quantity, which is the leading log at given order in one over m square. 
And yeah. can you can you resum that function explicitly to let's say so some reasonable space of this functions? One? Can, exactly. Can yes. You that? yes. 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 We resumed it uh, to all orders, uh, and it can be expressed uh, as uh, some harmonic is a function of some harmonic logarithms uh, of increasing uh, or of increasing transcendentality. Okay. But it's resumable. Okay, we have time for um, further questions or observations. It's to be question related to this. Um, can you find some kind of closed form as a function of this kappa? Or you're some kappa by kappa? We resum kappa. Okay, we were able to find a recursive relation for. Okay, this will be a function of a lot of uh, polylogarithms, and we were able to fix completely and in a recursive relation the highest order, but not the full answer. Okay, thanks. Mm 